Hello everyone, my name is Sanjay and I'm going to be talking you through some of the basics of um, painting weights, which is uh, a small aspect of the rigging pipeline. I'm going to quickly review the rigging pipeline just to see what stages you should think about, why you should maybe think about doing painting weights before certain other bits, and uh, obviously we're going to be learning about the importance of the roles of all the aspects of rigging. So I've just written up a few aims here. I'm going to learn exactly what painting weights is all about. On top of that, we're then going to learn about uh, uh, how to systematically make a pi um, you know, approach problems when it comes to painting weights. It seems to be a topic which students like myself have struggled with before because it's quite a quite an unsystematic thing if you don't be systematic about it it's um it can be quite you know walk taking one step backwards and two steps forwards and two steps backwards that kind of thing so it's really good to build an approach which is uh concrete and stick to it every time you have a new problem uh, we're just going to have a quick look at how maybe this would work in the sense of other departments. So rigging on its own is is obviously nothing without a, a mesh uh, from a modeler, or which is hasn't been has been textured. So you may have to be in touch with modeler and texture artist to make sure your rig is working properly. And eventually, also once you pass it on to the animator that also will be an issue so you all have to work together um, so I'm just going to talk about the departments you may have to work with on that as well um, finally the conceptual <laughs> leap that rigging is actually very important as well as fun it's, it's really uh, can be quite a rewarding aspect of computer animation when you uh, if you put your mind to it if you just understand a few of the um, sort of dark clouds that loom over it it's um, really not that hard and then you can just carry on, you know, just improve <coughs> it's not as hard as as it may seem at first when you don't know much about it anyway so what is rigging so I've written here rigging is the uh, process of taking something which is not animatable and then making it able to animate so that can mean taking pieces of geometry that have been modelled, for example, from a human character to you know, a robot or even a windmill, something, anything which needs to move, and you can rig it properly, then uh, you are making it able to be animated, which of course is central to computer animation. <clears throat> In this particular case we're going to be talking about something which is more like rigging a creature or a person or something which is uh, more like a creature <clears throat> so I'm gonna go into more detail about these things in the next slide but uh, you can have a quick read if you've done reading before you they may seem similar to you uh, seem familiar to you um, and for those of you it's your first time you can just have a look and you'll just cover a bit of groundwork. The next diagram pretty much says the same thing, but a bit more pictorially. So, let's say a, a friend of yours has modelled something and they give it to you to rig. So, what they've given you is something which is like a, a it's like just like a, a piece of clay, and you know, that thing would not stand up in a in an animation at all you need to make the bones for it. Once you make the bones for it, you bind the skeleton, bind those set of bones to the skeleton, you bind the, the, with the bound skeleton, you then paint the weights. Painting weights is all about making sure that the deformations of the mesh occur in the right way. And that can be quite tricky if you don't have a systematic approach, which we're going to get into more when I actually go through some more stuff. After you build, paint the weights, you build control curves. Uh, sorry, you build the control handles. The control handles 
will then be parented to control curves. They'll be the parents, the, the control curves, and they will govern all the movements, hopefully, so that you don't have to animate each bone. You, know, you can animate a, s a whole series of bones. And after you've done all that, you have to test the rig. So testing the rig, you know, if it moves in a certain way, if it's been modeled correctly, if there's texturing problems with it, obviously that can turn up in the model. Uh, does it animate correctly? You'll be talking to animators and troubleshooting with them a lot. So that's the entire sort of rigging <coughs> process as a whole. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that I guess you just need practice with and you'll be able to get a better idea of what's going on. Now, you might be wondering, why is it that you need to, you make the bones? Obviously, you make the bones first. Why, in some tutorials I've seen, you know, you bind the skeleton to the mesh first? Why, and then paint the weights first? Why not build the control handles first and then build the control curves and test the rig and then bind it and then paint the weights last? Well, the reason why I like to make the bones and bind the skeleton first is because um, there's a very important reason which I want to come back to the order, the reason why I want to do these two at the very beginning which becomes a bit difficult if you've done all this stuff first but I'll get into more detail about that later but the key concepts I really want us to learn from <coughs> this set of lectures uh, tutorials rather is that when you think of a mesh when you're painting weights don't think of the mesh as a continuous piece of like geometry go into vertex mode they are a set of vertices they are a set of points on the surface of the geometry and when you bind bind a set of skeleton to the mesh you are actually binding it to the verts the computer will when you do a smooth bind will give you a default set of uh, you know what it thinks is a good bind however obviously that's not going to be the case because you know the computer's not going to know which parts of the body need to be uh, need to be folding in certain ways, like between the elbow, the legs, and the knees. So that's when we need to come into it and start saying, "No, no, hang on, computer. We need to actually, um, the, you know, the knee needs to deform in this way, and the arm needs to deform in that way. We need to influence and you know, influence the joints in a certain way so that that happens correctly." And that's where we come into it. Okay. Right. Now, let me just get my my up. Okay. Right. <clears throat> now, this is uh, a model that my friend gave me to rig. If I just turn off the X-ray and the X-ray joints. Okay. You can see this is what it looks like. I mean, it's just a nice, nice mesh. Oh. Don't really want that. Okay, good. So we can see uh, here. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice mesh. It's been modeled very well by Ollie Kane. Uh, he's going to be the next best modeler in the business. Um, I have the privilege of, of rigging it. Now, remember what I said. We go into vertex mode. Okay, you can see, and uh, this is a rig that I've already bound. So that before I actually get into anything else, I want to show you how to bind a rig. Okay, so if I go press four, you know I can see the skeleton now. Now, um, you can't see this because of the screen is quite small. I'm going to move this across. And I'm going to make the screen a bit bigger. Now that is a search field, and. Um, Basically, I can get it to select all of the bones that I want bound, but uh, for most of you, that would mean just selecting all of all of your your bones. That's not a problem though. It's just something I did to make it more systematic. And then, so once I'd done that, okay, and then I would select the rig. Okay, this is already bound, but but this is what you would be doing. You'd, you'd select all the bones you want bound to the rig. You'd select 
the mesh, sorry, and you select the mesh, so shift select, so you go, you know, select all the bones, and you select all the bones, select the mesh, and you go to skin, bind skin, and I don't know if you can see it, I mean, you won't be able to see it, but you'd go to skin, bind skin, smooth, smooth bind, okay? And this is what I currently have right now. So you haven't really missed anything. Don't, don't be afraid of anything like that. Okay, now, um, just to have a little review of what we do have. Okay, let me get my mouse to work. Come on, it's working. Good, right, it's working now. Okay, all right, so, so now if I grab a joint, I move. You see how how the mesh is moving. Okay, this is obviously doesn't seem to be moving too badly around the arm itself. You know, not too bad, but clearly we're having issues with that part of the body there. You see, I'm moving the hand and the chest is moving. That's clearly not good. So this is these are the kind of problems we're going to be facing. Yeah, obviously moving the shoulder now, if I should say x-ray joints, I usually like to keep these types of things on. So you can see that when I move the mesh now, even the shoulder, the entire upper body moves. Okay, now, um, what I'm going to do first is go to my painted weights tool. Now, you can find that... Uh, it looks like this, but uh, if you were to go to uh, skin, edit smooth skin, and you go to mirror, oh uh, no, sorry, skin paint paint weights tool. So you paint paint weights tool. It would look like this. So I'm going to press on this anyway. Now, when we just okay, you obviously don't want to do that with nothing selected. You first of all, what you want to do is you select the mesh that you're dealing with. Go to the same thing again, you go to the paint weights tool. You see the whole thing turns black, and then you have some names on the side. Hopefully they'll look familiar, and because you have to label your joints, and you should have had all the joints that you've labeled here, and you'll see that, for example, I have a nice naming convention here, thanks to certain tutorials that taught me to do that. Um, but look, see, left ankle. I'm looking at the left ankle, and you see that that means, the whiteness there means, that, that is going to be influenced by uh, by ankle joint, which is highlighted blue here, this light blue, the rest of it is dark blue, that is all going to be moving relative to that. If I was to go to higher up, all of this part of the mesh, now like I said, it may look really... Um, really uh, continuous but actually it's talking about these points it's just talking about these points right so so I was looking at the thigh the hip here and that was affecting let me go back to object mode okay and that was affecting this entire set of points which are just indicated visually by this this blueness uh, uh, whiteness here so that's basically the basic idea. So this is what mine's already given me by default. So we're gonna have to go in and tweak. And we're gonna work on just painting weights on the arm. But this is a good start. You know, you can, we have a lot of work to do because of um, all that incorrect deformation around the body and stuff. So we'll get onto that in the next lecture. But hopefully now the things you should have learned is how to skin your thing by default settings. Um, and what painting weights is going to do it's going to help us correctly adjust the way the mesh moves in relation to the joints and certain joints affect certain parts of the mesh which are the points on the surface of the mesh which are the vertices okay right thank you and i'll see you in the next lecture